All right, I just want to show you just a couple more things on arrays here, and then we'll uh, go on ahead and move on, move on to the for loop. Okay. So uh, first, we're gonna know how to make set the array size here. So what this is the size of the array. Okay, so we can just set a couple of them here. Okay. We know so the first five will be the first five arrays will be initialized with these here respectively. So keys of zero is seven, keys of one here. Now if I delete this here, this is gonna be new. I do not have to do it to put uh, the size here if I initialize it this way here. What this means is that um, this size of array, there's already like an imaginary five here because I already gave it five numbers here. If I gave it a couple more. Then this would be the size of the array here. How many I have here? There's four. There's eight. So this is this array is size eight here. So then I can output keys of five, and it's going to be uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. It should output nine. If I out, yeah. If I uh, tell it to output, let's run this here, and then we should get nine, and we do. Okay, so this is another way to initialize the size of the array. By. So now we can change the size of this array to free here. Now if I output this, the program should have a problem. We'll say there's runtime here. Let me just continue here. Maybe I should hit break. Yeah, it just outputs a number here that doesn't exist. Why? Because I'm outside my bounds here. Look at that. I'm outside the bounds that doesn't exist. And right here, 3 doesn't exist because it only goes from 0 to 2. So I'm going to just hit continue here and then I'm going to just finish the program. Okay, so just try to stay in with the bounds. That, remember, that, that can just cause a couple problems for the computer. But 0 should be the 9 here. Key of 0 is the last one's the 9 here. Alright, so that's another way to do this here. We don't have to put the size here if we initialize things this way here. Now if I, uh, if I just do this here, it'll have a problem. Because it at least has, if I don't put anything here, it has, the array has to be greater than zero here. So I got to put something in here. Or if I do this here and I don't initialize it at all, it's going to have a problem because I have to at least put something here if I'm not going to use the braces to initialize it to anything. Now here's something here. This is what I want to show you. Let's say I have an integer and it was called a uh, n and it was equal to seven. Well, if I say uh, integer keys of n here, <coughs> well, the compiler is going to have a problem here. Now, I want to clarify that this is a new problem. What I mean by that is that um, if you're using Visual Studio 2008, you won't have a problem. I just discovered this problem recently. And this is only a Visual Studio 2010 thing here. I'll see, I'll try to look up do some research and uh, find uh, find the problem. I'll post it here. Uh, I'll make an extended video to this lesson. And I'll post how to fix that problem here. I used code blocks before as an IDE, and you might be using code blocks, but you will not have this problem here. If you make an int of seven, the compiler will not have a problem. It'll make seven arrays. So what we're going to do right now, <coughs> we're going to learn a, a keyword called const. Basically, what this does, this makes this constant here. So, so a constant n is equal to seven. What does this mean, constant n? Well, that means n is constant forever. I cannot change the value of n throughout the program. The compiler will have a problem with that. So, basically, whatever I make this variable here when it's first initialized, <coughs> I have to initialize it as soon as I establish it. I have to. Whatever I initialize it to is the value it's going to have forever. So, 8 will never be able to change. n will always be 8 until the program terminates here. So whatever value you give n here, let's say n is equal to 4, it'll always be 4 in this particular case. So, but look at this here. n will work here. Now I have a size of n equals 4 here. 
However, it's not that simple here. Let's say I had an int int of x and let's say it was t is equal to 5. Then I say n is equal to t. Well, uh, even though this is a constant n here, since n is equal to a variable, for some reason it will still have a problem making an array of 5. But the rules still apply to the constant here. I can say uh, t is equal to 2. But, and if I say n is equal to 7, it's going to have a problem. Because n is a constant value, it's always going to be 5 forever. So n will always equal 5. Now I can change t throughout the program here. But since, I, uh, since t was equal to 5 at the time I uh, created this variable here that was constant, it's always going to be 5. So that's the uh, issue and uh, a couple, new couple things here. With their, now let's say I had uh, keys keys of 7 here. Well, we already know. This, this is just an, initial, an initializing thing here. I can put n here. I can output the value of keys. I can output one, two, three, four, five, six, or zero, one, two, three, four, five. I can output the value of keys using a variable here. We used count last time in the couple programs that you've seen that. It's just when you initialize it, this has to be a constant value. And it and there's this exception here, or is a constant value and it's set equal to t. But that's just a that's just another problem here. Okay, so the last thing on arrays, I want to go over uh, multiple dimensional arrays. Or I say that right? Okay. Let's say I have a 3 by 3 in this case here. And I initialize these all to 0 here. And we delete this here. And we delete these variables here. And we make this 3. Okay, so I have already uh, written this up here. That way you don't have to watch me type it because it, <coughs> it's a little annoying to type. Okay. So right here, these are the nine different arrays here. Zero, one, two. You know, so we have zero, zero is one array. One, zero is one array. Two, zero is one array. Zero, one. These are all the nine different arrays here that we can have. Wait, is it? Yeah, there's the extra. Yeah. So three, six, nine. Now, if Here, let me. Uh, I want to. I want this to look like a grid here. Right, just imagine this is a grid. And let's output these numbers here. So this will just make it. Uh, now look at the C out statement here. Notice I broke these up into several different lines, but it's still all one big program statement here. And I get this to work right the first time. So we have zero 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 here. Now let's say this is what I wanted to point out to you. When we can uh, initialize them like this. So we have one four seven two five eight and three six nine. What's going on here? Why isn't it saying one two three four five six seven eight nine? Why isn't it, why is it not doing that? Well, that's because they're curt because the way it, the way it'll display this one here. It's supposed to be displayed this way. Look how see how these rows here now. Just for our sake here, I'm, for this tutorial, I'm going to call these the number of rows here, and this will represent the number of columns here. So the rows are always going to stay at zero. Now look here, I just changed this slightly here. So 
so I just changed the setup a little bit. Now when I output this, I'll put them in the right order here. So right here, these will the last piece, the last column here, would always end it go up would just count zero, one to two. Now when it got when it reached its max here, the comp compiler will automatically know that this is the fourth this is the fourth array in the set when you're using arrays here. So the last one will always uh, count up here. Then this the next one will count up. Now um, see now look it says it says one two three for the first array four five six seven eight nine. And not the other way around here. So now the, now here's another way we can initialize this here. We could have also have done this. Okay, so now there's look at the see the here. This is going to be a problem here. Basically, you're going to put this whole set into another set of braces here. Now it's the same thing here. But what's the advantage of this here? This just seems like it's more typing. Well, see this first row here? These rep these will represent the first rows. Oh. Uh, like here, this is row one, row two, row three here. Well let's let's say I deleted a couple here. And say I make this like 13. And then comma 50. Now let's run this here. Alright, hold on. Let me just make these whole numbers here. Just like numbers from 0 to 1. I notice I change these like the. So looking at this here, we have the first array here, which is 1 here. Now look, the remaining are equal to 0 here because I didn't initialize the next two here. But this right here is only referring to the uh, first column. So the next two are 0. Then the next set, the next number here is the 4, which is going to be on our second row here. Those are going to be, all three of those are going to be initialized to 4, 1, 5 respectively. Then finally 7 and 8. Now since this I didn't initialize this last one here, it's just going to automatically go to 0 here. So does that make sense here? This represents our the row zero 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 here. We only have a one in here, so it's only going to take the first one in that row equal to zero here because these are represented by rows here zero one and two. And then these ones here are the columns. But that's just initializing here. I really don't use I don't initialize variables this way anyway. But make sure this makes sense here. And can you can you see the pattern here? Zero, zero, zero. Since this only has a one here, it's only going to initialize this one. I don't have anything else here. If I decided to put something else here, like say we had one comma eight, then the first two would be initialized, and then the last one would just be initialized as zero here, since it didn't come across that in the set. So that's it on arrays. Now next we'll be going over the for loop.